What's up everyone, I'm back this time with a small review of the ASUS Strix 1070. Now if you want an in-depth review of the Strix series cards, in particular the aesthetics, click the annotation on screen right now to go to the video of the 1060 Strix to understand and get photos and video of the card outside of the test setup. Plus, it's a bit of more of an in-depth full review than this video will be. Now, with that out of the way, I have to say that the 1070 is quite a beast of a card, with this particular Strix card maxing out at 7.78 teraflops of compute performance. It's of my opinion, if you want to game comfortably with the latest titles at 1080p, I would invest into a 1070 so you can have those little extras such as anti-aliasing and ambient occlusion. Plus, it's around a 20% increase from the 1060, which is enough of an upgrade for it to be noticeable, but not enough to leave a hole in your wallet. Now, I've tested this with the OC mode that you can get via the GPU Tweak 2 app. It was tested against a Strix 1060 and an EVGA 1080, with the test system sporting an i5 processor and it being sealed in an NZXT S340 case, uh, since most people will be using the card in a case anyway. And on top of that, the system was in an environment with an ambient temperature of 28 degrees Celsius. So let's move on to what you really came to the video for, which is the benchmarks. Now with more power comes higher temperatures, and this particular 1070 got pretty hot, a lot hotter than my 1080 at stock speeds. And this card maxed out at 79 degrees on the GPU, and I would imagine that the VRMs would be much higher than that, at maybe around 90 to 95 degrees. But unlike my 1080, which might explode, the VRMs are actually actively cooled by the cooler. So that is one benefit of the Strix model cards. Now, moving on to boost clocks, I don't have a chart for the base clocks, mainly because the card can maintain those clocks without fail, but the overclocking of this card was able to get to a max stable boost clock of around 20, 25 megahertz and it was getting performance pretty close to a stock GTX 1080 with that. Now, even with more voltage and higher fan speeds, I really couldn't push this card that much further, and it just got to like a stable 2030, but then I thought I'd bring it down because sometimes it was artifacting in some games. Now, last up is the game benchmarks in 1080p and 4K, and we have uh, 3D Mark Time Spy, we have BF1, BF4, CSGO, Grand Theft Auto 5, Overwatch, and Doom, giving us some newer and older titles to compare the cards between. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night, I raise my hand. To the fire, but it's no use Cause you can't stop it from shining through It's true, baby, let the light shine through If you believe it's true Baby, won't you let the light shine through In conclusion, I feel that a 1070 can deliver you the premium 1080p gaming experience. It will give you great frame rates on modern titles and allow you to use those extra features like anti-aliasing and ambient occlusion, especially at higher values, around 4 times MSAA. Now, on top of that, you're not averaging at 60 FPS. You're actually averaging at around about 80 or 70. So if you do dip in some games, it won't be as hard as a hit. Uh, as you would get on a 1060. Now, if you can afford that little bit extra for a 1070, I do think it is worth it. Uh, a GTX 1080 is definitely, in my mind, not the best card this generation, as it isn't as powerful uh, as, a, as a Titan X, so you can't really do 4K gaming, and it's overkill at 1080p. So I'd buy a 1070, sit on it for two years, wait for a 4K capable card in the future, and then upgrade to that if it's in the same sort of pricing bracket as this. Now, that's all that I really have for today. If you guys enjoyed the review, hit the like button and subscribe for more reviews like this one. I'm Karma, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.